All right, everyone, welcome along. So reporting excellence with Empower BI really starts when you embrace those concepts of a single pane of glass of reporting. What it really brings to the table is that mindset that everything is going to come into a single place. We're going to bring all our report data into one dashboard or into one location. Okay. We say one dashboard, it could be a range of them. There might be a link between the two or three or four that you've got. But the point is always the same, isn't it? Everyone goes to one place to get all their report information, all their data. And if that feels, whoa, that's a bit scary, think about what goes on today. For you, for your business, no doubt you're going through the same as everyone. You buy a solution these days and it comes with a whiz bang reporting solution. It's great, it's amazing, you can do custom stuff. Okay, and it might be the most amazing thing in the world ever. The problem is it works for that one solution, doesn't it? And that's not gonna really deliver anything for you long term. What it comes back to then is working out how can we start to piece together or put in that landscape that's gonna allow us to draw those strands together from the disparate solutions into one tool, one build, one, one pack, okay? And we've done this for so many clients now. We've built dashboards, we've also pulled it together into a single PowerPoint pack. There's lots of options available for you. It always depends on what it is you want to do, but what we really recommend is that you start to embrace that concept. And then because you embrace that concept, any discussions that you have around saying, oh, we're going to bring in a new tool to do insert name here, has that mindset. So where are we going to get the data from? How does the data come out? And more importantly, how does that data get surfaced into our single pane of glass for our reporting, for our execs, for our key stakeholders, for everyone to be able to access? So let's cut on over, let's see what we've done so far and kind of recap a bit of what we're going on with this whole single pane of glass. So here we are, okay? This is the Sir Topham Hat workspace, isn't it? Okay, our application workspace for the senior leadership team, okay? What we've found as we've gone around and done enough work with Power BI over the years is when you focus on building workspaces based on report content, you end up repeating the, the, the mistakes of the past, should we say. You know, you, you're bringing what happened in the past into the present, okay? Whereas when you start to say, if we draw these strands together, and what do I mean by draw these strands together, is let's switch this to be this view, okay? And we can see we've got three workspace areas coming through or three report content areas coming through, okay? We've got our bikes, we've got our yellow taxis, and we've got our New York water towers. And you can see these are all in different workspaces. So our bikes are in the bikes workspace, taxis and taxis and our water towers are actually the demo models place that we were because i haven't done anything with these actually since we originally built them because it just runs works it's great this method works amazingly well from there then content comes into reports and these reports are all in this workspace okay and this is the thing because your report content can exist in a different workspace to the data and it's all transparent, and when your app permissions are in place, it all flows, people can access the data they need. You don't need to be replicating anything. We've got the data comes through in one place. We've got our senior leadership team here. This is our senior leadership team's view. We can then build, might have like an operational team view or like a director's view as opposed to the VP's view or the, or the, C, the, the C suite. All of those can exist. And because they're all coming from the same data model, which is really what the key is in this, isn't it? It's that whole idea, isn't it? That these models are gonna be in isolation, but will be used multiple times across multiple report packs. And we can see even in here, in this one, we've got the bike data is appearing on two reports already. Okay, so we've got one data model being used twice. Okay, and in practice, that twice can become 200 times if needs be. Okay, but hope, 
don't know if 200 times is worth it. You you have to think about what's going on with it. But I've certainly seen clients where we've got over 100 or you know up towards 100, and even as I say, 120. I think it's about the record I've seen with it. The key thing here is my area of, of work where IT or where our data team are going to really focus is around making sure that model is right. We've already got, because there are two areas here already, oh, yeah, so we've got this year, we've got monthly as well. Because we've got those, because we've got those two, we can actually start to piece together that there's going to be more going on with it. Or actually we start to think, well, these are less important, aren't they? They become kind of almost disposable. If tomorrow we put a new year in or a new mo new monthly version, it doesn't affect my data model. The, the model stays the same, doesn't it? It doesn't need further work, further revisiting. It becomes a plug and play environment. And the idea of dragging and dropping and doing that kind of thing is more important. And because of that, what we can start to do and why we start to see these high numbers of reports accessing the same data set is end users are starting to build content. So end users are going in directly, building content and working with it, all because we've got this mindset of this is how we're going to surface this up for you. This is how your access is going to work. Okay, You might find there are some challenges with that. Okay? In particular, the biggest one and kind of the one that's the most counterintuitive is actually when you go fully enterprise and go down the enterprise route with enterprise capacity, so Power BI premium capacity, you actually end up with everyone having free. And it becomes then, oh, I've got to pay for someone to have access to stuff. That can be a difficult challenge, but it's not insurmountable. Whereas if you're in the point for the smaller clients where you are going either with pro or premium per user, PPU, which does seem to be the, if I'm honest, that seems to be where most of our projects are going through at the moment. We like to start people with pro and only if we need to, do we go up to premium per user. But in practice, we're finding more and more of them are going up into premium per user because of the benefits that it can bring to the table. But at that point, everything you need to do, you're licensed to do, okay? So it's all, it's like kind of, you're paying for them to have access and they can actually do which is a real game changer that Power BI has, as opposed to, well, you've paid to access report content, but you can't build any report content. So because you can build it, people are doing that already based on this is the report pack that you've got. Okay, so if we actually have a look at what this senior leadership dashboard looks like now, okay, and bear in mind, it's not the, ne the nicest. I've not really done a huge amount to make it look amazing. Okay, but we've got this dashboard here, haven't we? Put the pointers back on. We can see, so we've got, haven't we? We've got three key areas, really. Okay, so we've got kind of three disparate areas that we've got here. So we've got our bikes middle, we've got our taxis on the left, and we've got our New York water tower inspections on the right. And you can build those up, okay? That's the key, three areas there, okay? These are three data sets that will never, never meet, okay? We will not combine them. We will not be putting them together. Theory, I could, you know, we could look and say, right, well, we can do something with it. We can pull them all into a proper data solution, which we would need to do, and then properly invest in sorting it out properly. We don't need to, though, okay? These three disparate data sets that will never meet exist in one dashboard, okay? This dashboard is ultimately the menu system that we've got. Okay, so we can see we've got, let me get out of this, okay. We've got our bike data summary. If we zoom in, so we can see the current year, what's going this year versus last year. Bear in mind, this year isn't the full year yet. It's really up to the end of August. We've got the monthly in terms of actually what happened in August versus what happened in July, so we can see the difference. And then we've got the highest by day of the week. You know, is there a point that we get to in some interesting data with that? You know, so kind of looking at this, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, seem to be far more popular back in um, August. Okay, so it's nice to see what's kind of going on with it. And the way we would interact with these data sets is we actually just need to click. So I can say, oh, the prior month, what happened there? And I can click and it will take me to a report page that shows me 
actually what's happened in that prior month. And I can start to explore and see that data. Okay, and I'll put these in top, okay? So we've actually got something that is a menu system that will allow us to interact and go through and explore our data. So let me go back to the dashboard. Yeah, now that's functionally what happens there, isn't it? There's a functional views. What we can also do, and what we've what I've started to do, is we can actually also build like a borough view. Okay, so for you guys, you might think, well, those three data sets that you've got, those could be, say, our department. So we might have finance, HR, manufacturing, or finance, R and D, manufacturing, distribution, you know, whatever you've got. You could be like a large multinational doing different things. You might have um, the original parent companies that they exist for. So you know whatever those are. That's one way of dealing with it. What we can also do is then say, well, actually, what's going on geographically? So we might have our European versus our APAC or you know, Asia Pacific versus our Americas. Those are all options that we could build in. Now, this is an example of what we've kind of done with that, where we could start that piece. So at the moment, let's say we've, we've got Manhattan, we could put Manhattan, Brooklyn, you know, obviously we go down Queens, the Bronx in there and we've got start to put some bike data in there so we can start to say well actually what's happened if we look at the prior month for manhattan and it takes us to the right report page for that okay i can do that could be you know at the moment these are all in one report each one could be a different report though okay so everything could be a separate report now the mindset and the methodology that goes into your dashboards is you want those top level metrics coming coming through at the at the main point of it so the top level comes through. What you then have is that report page that people go to, which gives them that detail as to what's gone into doing it. This way, the structuring of it that we've got here, let me, uh, yeah, is around, this is one that's kind of recommended from experiences. You've got the top bit here where you just have like numbers in particular and a bit of a heading around what it is. So you can build these, you can put text in there, you can do whatever you want with these. See, we've put some stuff in there in terms of a text box on the top row. Then below there, we've got uh, the way this is built, you've got six tiles for each area. It can depend how you want to vary those. Those could be core KPIs that that area of your business has. And then below, you start to build up specifics that you've got. So for here, we've got kind of a, a borough to borough breakdown of taxis. So taxis from Manhattan are looking like they mostly go to Manhattan. We've got bike hire by day of week in the current month or in the, the latest month period that we've got. And we've got the water tower inspections this year. The key thing to understand with it, though, is that this is something that I can build this for my business. And I've seen examples of it appearing or starting to see examples of it appearing across LinkedIn, which is great because this is definitely the way that works the most for you. If you think that lower half below those top six, top six core KPIs is around the initiatives, what would happen is over time, potentially you would look to build or to bring down an initiative. So if you think, so if we go into, let's do this, okay. So next month, for example, we might bring in something here. We've got a new initiative, so we could choose to add something. I'm just gonna put in a text box here, just so you can see. New bike initiative. We're going to do blah, 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 okay and my spelling is atrocious. There we go, right, let's apply that. Okay, so it's appeared, let's put it in the right place. Okay, and my last one has moved down. Now that's fine, so I can come and scroll down and then here we are back with this. The new one is here. As you go across your different departments, you might be doing that and saying, well, this one is gonna come down. And it might find that you over time, your what's further there is further, further and back. But because all of this, remember, because all of this ties into your Power BI data set that is being refreshed automatically, these should still work. 
So if in six to nine months we come back, do you remember when we were looking at the um, you know bike hires per day of the week? How did that? Where are we now? Quickly and easily, we've got that, and that could be pointed to a different report doing something completely different with a time filtering time series on it. it could be perfect. Okay. If we look, for example, at our bike data, at our taxi data, what I've done is I've actually got it linking to a different report pack. So we've got this now on, on our bikes. Whereas if we actually go, sorry, taxis, whereas if we go back to the dashboard for taxis and we actually go, oh, let's, oh, let's go back to the dashboard. I can't see because I've got too much light. A bit more options, go to the view details. You can see here, we've got a custom link, okay? This is one of the things that you've got. So you can have pages that are built just to surface up metrics that are just of no use or just they wouldn't work in the context of a normal report pack. And then you use your report pack to actually then say, well, actually go to this page, right? You find that it all filters through and it works. So coming back to the report that we've got for the taxi thin, We've got this capability, haven't we? Where we can come through and see, well, actually, what's going on? And I can choose, see, well, I'm interested in this. I'm interested in like the passenger counts. And I can say, well, I just want to see the passenger counts for 2024. So we can filter like that. Okay. And suddenly I'm just looking at what's going on in 2024. I can choose to come through and say, well, actually, you want to see what's going on in Manhattan. And we then see Manhattan journeys by pickup to drop off location and we can see, surprise, surprise, most journeys from Manhattan to Manhattan. It, everything is possible though, and it's all because of the way you build and structure your single pane of glass, that whole idea of having a report pane or a reporting plane within your organization where all the reports are gonna surface up to. And because everything that our senior leadership team is gonna appear there and in that pack, all tied, and that's their data security, that's the bit that's, that gives them confidence in those numbers, everyone's using that same report pack. So the number they see should be the same as the number that's gonna be seen by an operational team, okay? They might be different because they might not look at the same metrics, but the way they are built, the way they are calculated is the same. So the end result of all this really is that you end up with a beautiful dashboard and a beautiful app that allows people and the senior leadership team in this case to actually explore the data in a way that makes sense for them, but also that puts everything front and center for them. Now, we've got this, these sections on the left here broken out based on function. So we've got the taxis, we've got the bikes, we've got the water towers. There'd be nothing to stop us building report content and placing it up in there based on geographic locations as well. So we could put our Manhattan, our Bronx, our Queens, all in there as well. And it's all then easy for someone to come and say, right, I need to find that report that's based on the monthly numbers for anything, okay? And they just need to come in here, click on a number, and it will open up the report pack for them, all in the same app. So there's no, oh, you need to go to this link for this, you need to go to that link for the other. It's all here for them in a way that makes sense so they can quickly explore and see what's happening across the business. And this mindset of how we're going to build and report and place data in front of people, it changes how your whole organization works because all of a sudden you're seeing your data front and center. There's no, oh, it's here, oh, it's there. It's just we're going straight this way, okay? This is where data is gonna go. So when somebody comes and says, I'm bringing in this new tool, we're doing this now. Well, where, how do we get the data in? How do we put that in? If they say, oh, well, we're gonna be a PowerPoint off to the side, that's no good. It needs to come in here. This is our place of business. This is where data lives. And because that's where data lives, you start to be more data driven in your organization in the way you discuss data and the way you work with data changes. So what do you reckon then? Okay, placing an app like that at a functional level and making it really the center of how our senior leadership team will discuss process within the business or progress within the business, 
progress and process, changes everything. Suddenly, the focus is much more on actually development and growth for the company, as opposed to, well, my number's different to your number or anything else, because we've got an agreed, approved standard for everything now, as opposed to being something different. Likewise, if somebody suddenly comes into a, report, to a session and says, oh, I've got a new number, the question's always going to be, well, why is it not coming from there? And then we can start to work out, okay, has something changed in terms of, oh, actually the way it needs to be processed is this way now, in which case we can make that update, potentially restate historically as well and review what's happened. Because that happens too. I've known that one many times where we've updated a number. Oh, now can you go and tell me what it would have been for the last six to nine months? Yeah, eventually. Big, huge chunk of manual work coming my way, I think. Suddenly we do this in Power BI and because of DAX, because of the way it works, it's there, okay? It's, I, it, it changes the way everything works. It changes the whole way your organization thinks about data. Getting to the point of understanding that your use cases as they come through go in functionally as opposed to necessarily being a, a focus around use cases you actually start to get to something that works consistently across your business as well. So that single report layer that we've got for our senior leadership team, that's all they will go to. We've got one link. So when a new member of the senior leadership, leadership team joins, we give them access to one place. We can set that all up within groups. We can use a Teams for that, like a Teams group for that. So Microsoft Teams, share report content with a Microsoft team. Suddenly they can talk about it in the team. They can drop the visuals into the team. They can do all the kind of things you want to do. You can even surface that app in the team. So it's on Teams. They just go there. There's the app. I've got all my report stuff there. It's honestly, like, your mind just is blown when you see how this stuff all works in, in action. And I'm not constantly building and rebuilding new stuff when a new tool comes out. So I hope you found that insightful at the very least. If you agree with us, this is definitely the way to go. Get in touch, you know, office at geordieconsulting.co.uk. We'll work with you and help you solve your problems. If you want to let us know how you guys did it, or if you think this is just completely wrong, let us know down below. Put a comment. You know, I didn't, I disagree. We would never put our senior leadership team and all their report content in one place. It's much better to leave it in certain details there. Okay. But for now, stay safe. Take care. Ta-da!